Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. It's a crazy day. Is your day crazy? My day is crazy. But I'm here now with you. Flower School Live. My favorite day of the week. It's almost like a sanctuary when I come in here to hang with you. I have my coffee. Always makes me happy. It did a double for me today because I decided I needed it. My flowers surrounded by paradise. Thank you to teacher Carolyn for getting this all set up for me. I said, oh, don't worry, I'll be in and I'm going to be the flower queen and I'll set up the studio. And then the day just went crazy. Absolutely insane. We have snow. Oh no, I wanted snow this morning. I had no snow this morning, very disappointed. And then it started snowing this afternoon. It's beautiful, but it's already gone, but whatever. But it's like up, down, up, down, up, down. So then I have to go, okay, calm down, Leanne, because now we're here. Housekeeping, if you're on your phone, turn it sideways. It'll be a little bigger. If you're on your computer, you can go to full screen. If I'm on the TV, you've got surround sound, larger than life. Today we're talking flower school in person. This is the perfect time of year. It's my favorite time. Well, I say that about everything. I, I love the whole year. But springtime and flower school just sort of match because the flowers are abundant. There's so many beautiful things starting to bloom. Portland is absolutely gorgeous in the springtime. This year is a little later spring, which is going to be perfect for the March students because it'll be springing. Spring will sprung or sprung will have springed or whatever when you're here, which will be perfect. Um, snow will be gone, history, and the days will be a little brighter. It's going to be fun and you'll see so many great things. So we're talking flower school in person. We've got so many things scheduled. Um, wedding, fundamentals, basic floral design, advanced floral design, sympathy design, advanced wedding trends. Oh my gosh, there's so much coming up. Wedding flower boot camp, but lots and lots of fun things. I thought I would demo some designs that you might do if you're in flower school and then be here to answer any questions that you may have. In the studio to help me is teacher Carolyn, so she'll be watching and looking for your questions and voicing them out to me. Also, Ricky is here keeping us live on tech, making sure the camera angles are right and that I stand in the right place and talk to the right camera. And she'll be looking too for questions to see if there's anything that I miss. Virtually with us, we have teacher Michelle. She is hunkered down at home in snow, but it will melt. She'll be back tomorrow. Then Susie's on YouTube. Hello, Susie. I know you've got snow coming tonight, maybe, which is kind of fun. And then Caledonia on Facebook. And I have no idea where you are, so you might be in the sunshine for all I know. And then David's with us. I know he's right here. He was the one that texted me. He goes, did you know it's snowing? It's not sticking, but it's snowing. But, you know, we'll take what we can get. And then we have you. So make sure and introduce yourself. Let us know where you're from. And you might tell us what your weather's like. Is it snowing? Is it freezing? Is it sunny? I know if you're watching me in Hawaii, it's beautiful. If you're watching me in New Orleans, you might be slightly hungover after Mardi Gras. But wherever you may be, check in, put your tulip on if you're part of the tulip bunch, and start the collaboration. thought I'd start with these two. I'm going to use foam in the first arrangement because I wanted that to come up at the very beginning. The question that I hear frequently is, do I have to use foam? No, you do not. And then they say, are you totally foam free? And they say, no, we are not. No judgment. Total choice. I want to show you all your options. When you come to flower school, we open the door to all different perspectives so that you can explore and see which one is correct for you. Because everybody's going to be different. 
And so depending on where you are and what type of business, what type of designs you do, you may be totally foam free. You may be totally foam. You may be somewhere in the middle. You get to choose. We'll make sure that you know best practices on everything. We'll give you the goods, the bads, the uglies, all of that. And then you get to decide. So Ricky, if I do these straight on, do they glare too much? Are they okay? No, they're fine. Okay, so I'm gonna do them straight on because I thought I would start with the asymmetrical design, which is something we teach in basic floral design one, the very beginning. And we do it both as a, well, we do symmetrical and asymmetrical, classic and stylized. Then we do some traditional blooms and then some contemporary blooms so that you get to see different ways that it is designed. Then you choose and you create. Uh, and if you like to do things in a more traditional manner, you might go one direction. I'm looking at mine to see which way looks like the front and which way looks like the back. And that kind of looks like the front facing you. If I turn it this way, it's not quite as pretty. So there's my front, your direction right now. So I'm going to give it a cut and then place it in with the front facing you. And as I work, I eyeball the top to make sure that I'm staying straight. If I look down where I'm pushing, oftentimes when you're done, it's not straight any longer. And so then that doesn't work. And that really is not a good thing. Then looking at another one, where's the front? Front is facing you now. One of the things we teach you in flower school is how to analyze your stems. How to determine where's the front, which way is it facing, how do I work with this bloom, and learning right, left, front, back, that's kind of part of the challenge of floral design. Now this bud didn't quite fit, but I'm gonna go back and add it because I like it. It can go in there, making it appear that it's coming from the same binding point. So now I have two verticals. One I started on this side, one on this side, because I'm gonna reverse it. And when you design, it's interesting, I always love it. Um, some of you will design in the direction that I do. You copy it step by step and you go, oh, this is exactly where it needs to be because that's what Leanne did and so that must be correct. And others of you will look at something and go, oh no, I want to put it over here. That's a little too long. I'm going to cut that down a bit. And so you'll be following exactly what I do and you'll go, okay, well this is where it is. This is the perfect spot for it and you copy. You know, copying is fine. That's totally good. One of my favorite sayings is imitate until you innovate. Because you can't be innovative and creative until you truly understand what you're doing. So to get to that point of being innovative and creative, you imitate, you copy, you replicate. And so when you're at Basic Flow Design 1, often the times you are just kind of trying to copy to make it all fit together. And so you might do exactly what I do, following the exact same recipe, making sure that everything balances just the way I did. Or you may decide you don't like that and you want to change it out. And that's one of the beauties of being in class is if you decide you want to go to this side, you can. If you want to go on this side, you can. You can change it up because either way, it's asymmetrical and it all still works. And it's kind of fun doing them in pairs like this so you can see how that replication can be adjusted. Now, once I get my lines in, I've established my form. Now I need to repeat my lines and also create emphasis. And emphasis is where you'll have that main area, usually down towards the bottom, that gives a resting point for the eye that adds weight, that then supports all of your extended stems. So right now I have 
three lines established, angled, vertical, horizontal, angled, vertical, horizontal, and I have an asymmetrical triangle begun, but I don't have that emphasis area. So I would need to fill in, and maybe I'll grab some carnations. While I grab flowers, what's going on out there? Well, we have all kinds of people, worldwide people signing in on both Facebook and YouTube, and everybody's chiming in on their weather. We've got everything from snow and ice all the way to 82 degrees in North Carolina. Oh my God. Yes, parts of the East Coast are really going crazy. Um, I know my bonus daughter typed in that they skipped spring and they had already jumped to 90 degrees uh, and she's in Florida and I was like, oh, you know, talk about winter to summer instantly. Isn't it amazing how our world is so different depending on where you are? And I know some of you are in the Southern Hemisphere, so yet you're totally different from us. Talk about being on the opposite makes it really fun. I think that's what I love about flower school, it's especially when you do come in in person. People fly in from all over and they bring different perspectives and all of a sudden we all think and learn a little differently because we all absorb what others have brought to the classroom. That brings such great joy. That's why, I mean, here it is. Well, I'm not going to say how many years because then I would date myself, but many years later, I still love what I do because although I'm teaching floral design over and over and over and over again, it's always different because the flowers are different. I know I went um, shopping this morning for flowers because we have a class tomorrow, Fundamentals of Floral Design, which, I mean, if anybody is in Portland and wants to sneak in, I think I have two spots left maybe. Um, and I bought extra so that we could have a couple more. So I think I have two people left in that one. But it's Fundamentals of Floral Design. And when I went shopping today, it was so grand. I think I had the most fun I have had so far this year because they had so much fabulous product. Um, tomorrow we're doing three different arrangements. Uh, one will be in vase, one will be in foam, and one will be a hand tie. So three different techniques, three totally different designs, three totally different color schemes. One I'm doing all bright, festive, over the top, think bulb flowers, tulips, iris, daffodils, all my favorites. Then one I'm doing a little moodier, a little darker. I have some black Baccara roses that are absolutely stunning. And then bronze cymbidium orchids. Uh, a little bit of um, agonis and some leucodendron and a flower that I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think it's in the protea family. Did you see that sort of? I did. It was fabulous. Do you I know what it is? I don't. I think it's in the protea family. It I'm going to have like to do it. some research on that. It was so cool. We've never used it in the classroom. I had never seen it before. And these lucky students get it. Yes! And then the third arrangement just was into a purple mode and so I got two different colors of purpley roses and some really intense um, eggplant carnations. Uh, I don't remember what else. Oh my gosh, it's going to be stunning. Let me tell you, uh, that's just going to be so great. Uh, so, so great. So now I grouped two at the bottom to build my emphasis and notice how I hid one behind Students, do you know what that is? If you've been to flower school, chime in. What did I just do here? I did two flowers and they are, so you have to come up with the word, and then I'll keep going on the other one because I need a focal emphasis over here. And I'll do the same thing. So what am I doing when I, boom, boom, boom. Flower school people, you should know this. If you don't, I'm going to be crushed. Well, they're chiming in right now. The first one to chime in is Greg, and he said shadowing. Ding, 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 winner. Oh, I love it when students get it right. I hate it when you get it wrong. But you know what? Getting it wrong is just part of the learning curve, too. You know what? We all get it wrong sometimes. Today, I got it wrong with my computer. Oh, my life has ended. If you're emailing me, sending me anything on my computer, I'm not going to see it because my computer is now at the computer doctor. I know. So I can never work again. So 
I guess it's a good thing I have flower school tomorrow because who needs a computer for that? I get to come play with flowers. Yeah, no computer needed. So okay. now I have shadowed to create my focal emphasis. Now I'm staggering carnations to establish a stronger vertical line. And I'll do the same thing on the other. And then I'm going to have to turn it and face myself for a second to see how far off I am. Because designing backwards, sometimes you get it a little bit cattywampus and that's not what I want. So I'm going to turn it that way you can see the back and we'll actually fill in the back a little bit. Oh, not too bad. You know what? You'd think I had done this a time or two. Not too bad here. Well, this one is kind of... This stem is off. You maybe saw that that looked kind of wonky. Sometimes if it's wonky, curate it, prune it, move it. If it doesn't enhance, get rid of it. Save it. You can make, use it someplace else. So I'm going to adjust this, this, this. And you know, looking at this, I'm going to reverse these two. This is where it gets kind of picky. Sometimes it's just better to be this direction. Little tiny nuances that makes it better. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the bonuses when you come to in-person flower school, is you have a teacher looking right over your shoulder that can say, well, you know, if you just switched it this direction, it would be a little bit better. And you're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? Like, well, because you're the student, I'm the teacher, and it's my job to think of that. Bringing one more in, kind of in the back, so that it fills in that side. Notice how you go one, two, three, four, and then five, pulling your eye back. This one, I'm just going to do the three, because it's smaller. It doesn't need all of those. Uh, we get calls sometimes from online students who say, well, I'm making the arrangement that Leanne made, and... There's not room for as many flowers as she used. It's because either your flowers are a different size, or your container's a different size, or you're designing a little different size. That's okay. It's not wrong. It's different. And in the classroom, we have a recipe. We're working with it because we know what we want to create. But depending on the flowers that you choose to use, your recipe may vary a little bit. You might need one more carnation. You might need one less carnation. You adjust it. And that's something we work quite a bit in the classroom, making sure that you understand how to make those adjustments, what it means to adjust, and how to go about it, making the right choices. Because you don't want to do the wrong choice, that's for sure. Yeah. Look at this such gorgeous lisianthus. I was thinking that I was going to use that for class tomorrow, but I don't have anything pink tomorrow, and I decided, well, then it gets to be for me. Uh, so I thought, I get the lisianthus. When you come to flower school, you work with literally dozens of different varieties because you need to touch them. You need to see how they hold, how they respond, what is their character? Because if you don't know, how can you communicate that to your customer? So while you're here, we do as many different varieties as we can get our hands on. We're constantly looking for different things so that you truly know what a flower is, how to use it, what its characteristics are, and yes, you take it all home with you, so then you can watch how well it holds. Um, does it fade quickly? Does it continue opening? Does it change colors? That's one of the things that I love about Lysianthus. Although this bloom is pink, if I take care of these, these buds are going to continue to open, but they're going to stay this whitish green color. They're not going to turn pink. How cool is that? I just think that's pretty amazing. Mother Nature is quite stunning in what she puts together and how she makes it work. And our job at Floral Design Institute is just to try to introduce you to those miracles and help you to learn what it means to use these flowers and how to use them 
to their very best beauty. Oh my gosh, these are so lovely. I'm going to put that one over there, turn it back so you can see. Doesn't that turn out just beautiful? It's so feminine. Looks like cotton candy. Almost a little too sweet, you know? But you know what? Sometimes we design sweet because we're not always really sweet. Sometimes we're kind of sharp and harsh, but we all know. I'm not known to be sharp and harsh. Well, sometimes if I get hungry, yeah, I can be sharp and harsh, but usually not. As long as I have my coffee, I'll be nice to you most of the time. <laughs> Unless you cross one of my tulips, then I'm not nice to you. Then you are dead to me. What's going on? I'd like to give a shout out. We have a first timer, Dan, who is a Filipino florist from the Turks and Caicos? Caicos. Caicos Uplands. And then Avery has joined us. He hasn't been up with us for quite some time, so he's back this week. Well, yay. So, and the first timer was? Dan. Dan. Okay, let's do a shout out to Dan. Everybody welcome Dan. We love first timers. Anybody else a first timer, chime in. Let us know so we can welcome you. Tulips, get to know Dan. Besides, you might want to know somebody if you go on vacation, and there you go. You've got a floral connection. One of the most important things to have in life is a florist connection. So now I've turned it so that I can see, and you can see how everything just fits together. Now, one silly little thing that I'll share with you, when we design, we usually design see, this direction. I had to turn it around and think about it. When we're teaching, we're usually designing, yeah, this direction. If you are left-handed, you'll probably design this direction. Also, if you have dyslexia, you'll often turn and do it this direction because you just work differently. So then if this is the way you normally do it, it's actually really hard to do it this way. So one of the things I do with students is we'll have them do it whichever way is comfortable, this way or this way. They design it, they create, and then I'll say, I want you to take it home, take it apart, and design it in the opposite direction. It's hard. So I challenge you, next time you do an asymmetrical, try doing it in the opposite direction. I think you'll be amazed how difficult it is because your mind sees things one way, be it right or left, it doesn't matter, but one of them is going to be more natural for you and if you have to switch it, it's tricky. I find it's easiest when you're switching to do them side by side like this because then it's just a little easier. And then it's always fun to do a pair. It just sort of is a cool design style. And you can do it like I did here, or I'm gonna move these out of the way so that they're back in water so I don't want them to die. You can swap it and do them this way. And it's very cool too, especially like if you're doing a mantle piece. Just confirm, ah! to call James to other. Ah! My phone is talking to me, that's weird. Oh, I was like, don't you? This is a really weird day, people. It's a very weird day. So, anyway, if you're doing it this way, if you're doing, say, a mantelpiece at a home, and then you put one on each side, you can do candles and such in between. Way cool. Or if you're doing, say, a church altar, there may be a stained glass window up between, and then you frame it. Mm. Or you can go back the opposite direction where it just gives you then a symmetrical triangle. When you put the two together, all of a sudden you have a symmetrical triangle. A magic thing. How cool is that? Flower school wonders, you know? And when you're here in Portland, 
we try to introduce you to all those wonders as to what is. I'm going to finish these later. You don't need to watch me shove greens in there. It's like you've seen that before. Um, but we'll finish them up. We'll make them be lovely and we'll get professional photos of them, post them on the Tulip Bunch tomorrow. So if you are one of the tulips, make sure you have joined the Facebook group Tulip Bunch because then you'll get first pick at all the photographs. Then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll get them posted on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest, and YouTube, all four, so that you can see them no matter which medium you like to work in. Another question that I hear frequently is, how much is it going to cost to buy flowers? Well, guess what? When you're in flower school right here in Portland, there's no extra cost. You just show up. We give you a knife. We give you all your containers. We give you all your flowers. We give you your apron. You get your book. I mean, you just show up. It's like going to kindergarten. Everything is just there for you. It's the coolest thing ever, I will be honest, because you don't even have to think. I even have a bottle of water on your table so you don't have to remember to bring water. Hello. Flower school magic. It's the best. So yes, if you're thinking about, well, what else does it cost? What hidden expenses are there? There are no hidden expenses. When you register to come to flower school, you show up and we do the rest. Now, you have to do the work because that's why you're here. You want to learn floral design and you want to learn it well. So, yes, you've got to do the work. There's no ifs, ands, or buts there. We're not going to do it for you. We want you to master those skills. We want you to know the how, what, why, when, all of it. You know, when people say, well, how far ahead should I make my corsage? Or when do you deliver for a funeral? We want you to know that. And so we'll give you that information. You have to do the work of making sure you learn all of the designs. And then everything else is just here for you. The one thing I do ask you to bring is a camera so that you can take pictures. But you know what? We all have cameras in our pocket these days. So your phone is totally fine. You can take pictures with your phone and you'll be just hunky-dory. It works just fine. And what else do I want to put in this one? Oh, you know what? What, oh, what kind of foliage is that, Leanne? Ooh, good question. <laughs> do you know? I know. Do you know? I'll give you a second to think about it. If you know, type it in there. Be the brainiac. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -dum. Okay, that's enough time. If you can type it that fast, it's too late. PRS. P-I-E-R-I-S, I believe, Piaris, mm -hmm. uh, and commonly known as Lily of the Valley Bush, uh, and it gets these little berries on it, and it is so lovely, and as it ages, the little berries all fall on your table, not so lovely, but it's kind of cool. Other thing I bought, and then I didn't use it, we were doing filming this week, um, Ricky and I have been secluded in the studio, hiding from the world, trying to get new videos ready for you. Um, oh my gosh, you're gonna love them. We had so much fun. But I bought some geranium, because I thought, ooh, that would be really cool to put in something. And then I didn't use it. So I'm going to use it now, and just talk about the fact that the world is changing. And the standard foliages and such, we're not using all of them all the time. So when you come to the classroom, you're going to see a variety of different things so that, yes, you'll use leather fern. You'll learn how to take care of it. You'll learn how to use it to its best advantage, how to keep it alive. You'll use some salal so that you understand how to get that bulk of a base of a design that really stretches out. And you're going to have fatsia or aspidistra, maybe some ruscus, um, grasses, uh, probably oregonia, 
maybe pittosporum. And sometimes I find odd things. Like today I found, or the other day I found the geranium, and so I got that. And we do the same thing in the classroom. If we find something that's kind of odd, that's just perfect, we go ahead and grab it and say, oh guys, I want you to work with this so that you learn how it reacts. Is it hard to cut? Is it easy to cut? Does it smell nice? This one doesn't. It's not scented geranium. Sometimes we get scented geranium and that is so wonderful and it just makes you happy. But this isn't scented geranium. This is just geranium. So um, we try to give you little bits of everything. Then you'll work with the staples. Roses and spray roses, definitely because chances are you'll be using those when you're out in the real world. So we actually dedicate an entire day to roses, where you learn dozens, half dozens, bud vases, hand ties, the full care and handling spectrum. And then you do your roses. And it feels like a day in a flower shop because you're doing arrangement after arrangement after arrangement after arrangement. And you just get done and we say, make another, do it again, do it again. And you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like a florist. And that's the goal, to have you feel like a florist. So that when you go out into the real world, you're like, I got this. And it warms my heart. I get um, emails from students that They've had their first job, and then they're like, oh my gosh, Leanne, you're right. I know how to do this. I got there, and they just said, here's your table, here's your orders, go for it. And you can, because that's our goal, is that when you are here, you learn the hows, the whys, the whats, so that when you go somewhere and somebody says, okay, get her done, you can. You might not be the fastest designer yet, but speed comes. That's okay. What else is going on out there? Well, Greg said two greens only. <laughs> <laughs> Busted! Oh, man. Yes, if you've seen me on live before or if you've been to flower school, you know that Leanne has a rule. It's not a rule for rules, but it is a rule because it's my rule and that's all that matters. Um, I like to have at least three foliages in any design at any time because it creates so much more interest. And if you do less than three, it's just kind of boring. And so I like to have lots of different foliages. Do you hear the doorbell? That is Mr. UPS, or it might be Mrs. UPS, or it might be Ms. UPS, or it might be Mix UPS, I don't know. But UPS is here because we have shipments going out. It's interesting that today was a big shipping day. We had mail shipments, we had UPS shipments, preservatives, tools, ring blanks. A lot of you are doing rings, obviously, for prom which next week Michelle will be here talking about prom. So if you're into the prom mode, come join us next week. But um, sold a lot of ring blanks this week. That was kind of fun. But anyway, so it's on its way. So if you placed an order as of this exact minute, every single order that came in is now out the door. So time for you to place some more orders. Keep us hopping, that's your job. If you haven't signed up for flower school yet, Now's the time because flowers are selling more than ever before. It's the busy time and we're trying to get as many people graduated before Mother's Day as possible because Mother's Day is going to be high demand holiday and then we roll right into the wedding season. It actually starts a little before Mother's Day but it's going to be Mother's Day then weddings and it doesn't stop. And my phone is ringing and my email is dinging with, Leanne, we need help, we need help, we need help. Or maybe, Leanne, I want to be a florist, I want to start my own business. You need to do it now. Period. Because now is when the demand is there and you don't want to miss out. So to help get that going and give it sort of a jump start, we are doing one 
time, one class, one only never to be repeated because it goes against everything I ever say we were going to do. But there's been such a feeling of desperation that we need help, we need help, we need help, that I feel like we need to do our part. So for the first time ever, we're going to do a one class, one time, this time only savings. And that is for the class that starts on March 6th basic floral design because you can enroll in that class in person here in Portland, enjoy the spring bloom and be totally ready to go and working prior to Mother's Day, prior to the wedding season, helping to fill the need in the flower world. The bonus for that, that class only. So March 6th, here in Portland, so that's the only thing it's good for, is $500 off. Yeah, I said that. $500 off. That's huge! But the industry is in desperate mode. They need more designers. People want to buy flowers, and there's not enough people designing flowers right now. So I feel like every one of us has to do our part. And what I can do is make sure that we have a class. Uh, and so we did schedule one so that it starts March 6th and graduates before Mother's Day. And then we're going ahead and making it $500 off so that it makes it a little more affordable for those of you that need to fly in from out of town. It'll pay for your airfare. You know, think of it that way. You get to go to flower school and you don't have to pay for your flight because you saved $500. It'll pay for that flight and allow you to come to flower school, allow you to begin a career, and be working before Mother's Day. That's pretty grand. So, Ricky, do you have a sign you can put up there to make sure that everyone can see that? Because I know some people watch the live stream without any words because you're at work <laughs> and you're not supposed to be listening to me. So you just kind of have it on the corner of your computer where you can see the designs happening. Now, others of you are watching at work, but you can't watch because your boss would get mad at you. So you've got little earbuds in and you're listening to me. <laughs> I love that. I hear all those little stories of, oh yeah, I'm not supposed to be listening to you or watching you because I'm supposed to be working, but they think I'm just listening to music, but I'm really listening to you. So for those of you that are just listening and not looking, now's the time to flip your phone over and peek. The arrangement is done. Now you can see this one. This is what I made. Okay, now put your phone back because just you're listening to me and you're working. We'll put this one aside. I'll doctor it a little bit and make it even more fabulous and then bring it out tomorrow in the photograph so you can see it. So I did a foam. Do you have to use foam? No, you get to choose, okay? I did fresh water in a vase. Okay. I only used two foliages. Sorry, Greg. Now I'm going to do the hand tie. So it's the third technique. There's so many different things we teach in class, but I try to give you all the different flowers that you can possibly try and experiment with, all the different techniques, the different mechanics, the different ways of designing, because some things you're going to love, other things you're not going to love. And that way you can choose which one is best for you, rather than being little clones of me. You don't need to be a clone. You need to be unique. You need to be you. And I thought, let's talk spring, because the March class will be doing a lot with spring flowers, because it is. Um, they're the last class of this year that will have any daffodils. And it's going to be right on the edge for daffodils with you guys, because um, daffodils just aren't available year-round. So we'll cross our fingers that the daffodils are still here when you come. But uh, I thought, well, I'll use in the Jonquil family, or the Narcissus family, these little tiny, they're like a paper white, but they're yellow. Is it tete -te? Is that what they are? No. What, do you know which kind they are? I do not. I don't either. Okay, do we have any gardeners out there? Do you know what kind this is? It's little and fragrant, like a paper white, 
but obviously you can see they're yellow, they're not white. So do we call them paper yellows? Or maybe they're antique. Narcissus. Narcissus sounds far more valuable than daffodil, doesn't it? Um, oh, they're fragrant antique narcissus. That's what we'll call them because that makes them very special. And then this is a flower that's not abundantly available, but it's pretty cool. That soft blue color is unique. It's Tweedia, T-W-E-E-D-I-A, Tweedia. Uh, and so I thought, I'll use some of that. What else do I want here? Ooh. Look at this hyacinth. Mm, it's fragrant too. Those things just look beautiful together, don't you think? That is like the essence of springtime. And it's going to be so dang fragrant that it might actually make me ill. Who knows? What else do I want in here? Ooh. Look at these tulips. These are a unique one. They've got kind of a strange ruffly petal. And they're a little fresh. Oh, but they're reflexing. Okay, I was afraid they might be too fresh and not reflex. But they are, so that's kind of, uh, not totally. They don't want to completely reflex. Nope, too fresh. Looks almost like a trillium with just the parcel reflex. You like that? Nice one, huh? So now, the basic course, that's the one we're doing the promo on. That's the one you can save $500. Starts March 6th. Um, one time, one deal. Take it or leave it, yeah, that's fine. But we also have an advanced class coming up that's at the very end of the month. And that one has, I wanna say four spaces left. Um, it's almost full. So if you are thinking about joining us for your advanced studies in that March period, getting it done before Mother's Day and before the wedding season begins, there is a little bit of space left, but you need to get that registered and reserved before it's too late. I had um, a note from Krista today. She's like, I got my passport. I've got everything set. I hope you have a place for me. I'm thinking, <gasps> but yes, I did. I have a place for her. So it's all set and her space is saved. So she's coming into Portland and um, will be joining us, which will be grand. Uh, and then we've got the fundamentals class tomorrow, which I believe I have two spots left in that if anybody wants to just jump right in immediately. Then wedding boot camp is next week. It's sold out. Too late for that one. If you want to get on the waiting list in case somebody can't make it, you are welcome to call us and we can put you on the waiting list. But wedding boot camp is sold out. Then we'll be doing wedding boot camp again in April, I believe. Will you check? April 13th. April 13th. And that one has not sold out yet. So there is room there if you want to join us for Wedding Boot Camp. It's a one day more introductory class. So like if you've done basic flow design, you've already had everything in Wedding Boot Camp. You could come for a refresher and we do things a little differently, but you already have those skills. So um, Wedding Boot Camp is really for someone who's just beginning to explore the world of flowers. Then also, I think it's in April, we have the advanced wedding trends and techniques. And that I do have, I think, five or six spaces left in that one. So wedding trends and techniques is still available. So you can do that one. And then in June, the very last of our spring session, because June you're really getting into summer, and so that's the very end, we've got the advanced sympathy and celebration of life class so that we're going into all of the more contemporary and trendier work that's being done for celebration of life and sympathy design because that's such a growing need in our industry and will continue to be a necessary part so we have a two-day class devoted strictly to that coming up in june so lots and lots of options for in-person classes and every single one of them, there's no added expense. It's all inclusive. You show up, 
you have your camera, don't forget your camera. And we do everything else. Makes it pretty, pretty painless, pretty wonderful. Look at this seeded eucalyptus. Some of the nicest seeded eucalyptus I've seen in a while. Um, we've been getting sort of sad seeded eucalyptus. And this was just splendid. I had, like I say, I had so much fun when I was shopping because flowers are becoming abundant again because of the season. So perfect timing for flower school because just as everything is in perfect, pristine condition, we'll be buying all this stuff for students. So I am very happy and I know students will be very happy and hopefully, hopefully you're one of those students. It would be grand if you could join us. You know, take time now. Invest in yourself, invest in your future. It's interesting that the world the way it is, it's kind of scary. The economy the way it is, it's kind of scary. Things can be worrisome. And I know um, I've had a few people reach out to me that they were looking to get a side gig because they were a little concerned that with um, the increased costs for things that they were going to have a little tight on their budget. And they were asking me, is floral a good side gig? And I'm like, hey, yeah, especially now it is. Um, now is the time. If you've ever thought about doing floral, now's the time because people are buying more flowers. Flowers are more in demand. Jobs are there. If you want to do your own work, that's good. While you're in flower school, we'll go through the business side of things as well because I find so many of our people do decide to do freelance or self-employment, a home-based or studio-based. So we do include business in your class automatically. It's not an extra class you have to sign up for. There's not an extra fee for it. It's all in there. So you'll learn wholesale pricing, retail pricing, markup, cost of goods, um, how to buy flowers, what to do, how to source them. All included in there because that's kind of where you'll hopefully be heading. And then I can hear about your successes and hear about what you've done and how you're doing it and that makes me so happy. I was um, at the market again today getting the stuff for tomorrow's class and it was so funny the person who was preparing my invoice just looked at me and was like, you know what, I see so many of your students here. It must make you so happy to see them be successful. And I thought, yeah, it does. It really makes me super happy. Michelle, what else is going on? We have a lot of conversation about both classroom and online. Uh, which, which is better, classroom or online? Great question, because um, so many of you, it's not an option to come to Portland. Uh, maybe life gets in the way, you can't get away from your job, you have children, you got a dog, you know, who knows what your reason is. Um, but there's something stopping you from coming to flower school in person. And so we do have the online class, which is the same. Uh, it's same exact education, same exact everything less expensive because you have to source your own flowers. We don't provide everything. So which is better? If you can take the time and if you have the opportunity to come to Portland, coming to the classroom is great because it's quick, it's easy, it's all taken care of for you. You don't have to do any extra work. You just show up, you study flowers, you begin a new career. If that's not an option, the online is fabulous because it's self-paced. You can fit it into your time when you have time and you can use the flowers that you have in your area. You don't have to worry about, well, what if I can't get what Leanne used? It's okay. Use something else. That's totally fine. So which is better? I don't think one is better. They're different in that there's different times in your life when different situations work. So certainly not better, definitely different. 
Um, the, in the classroom is better in that there's the fastest way possible to begin a new career, period. There's not a faster way. Uh, doing it from home, no one has ever completed the basic and advanced, become a certified floral designer in four weeks. It's impossible because it takes time to gather all of your materials. Sometimes you have to wait until things come available and so it's going to take longer, period. So in that case, the classroom is way better because you can be out working, earning money, being a certified floral designer in four weeks. How cool is that? Now, if you can't do that and you're working from home and studying from home, how cool is that that you can? That it is an option to actually do a career without disrupting your life. You can still do your laundry, feed the dog, make sure the kids get to school. All your other responsibilities go to work. The things that you wish that you didn't have to do so that you could just do flower school and nothing else, but that's not an option. And so you can do flower school on your terms. So in that case, doing it from home online is better because it allows you to do something you love within your own reality. But if you can do it in the classroom, it allows you to do what you love quickly, efficiently, and begin a career in a month. I know, that's just almost overwhelming when you think about it. Begin a career in one month. Not many things can you say that works, but it does work in floral design, especially this time of year, because this is when people need you. They need to buy flowers. They need designers. They need people that are out sourcing new materials. Now, one thing that's kind of new and different and exciting, many of our students are also flower farmers. And so this is a good time because you may be planting, but you're not into the thick of things. You know, it's not so crazy busy with everything growing and going bonkers that you don't have time to do your studies. So for those of you that are flower farmers, this is kind of like your last chance before it gets crazy busy until late next fall when finally things settle down again. So if you're thinking about being a flower farmer designer, the timing is good for this so that you can get in and get started. The added bonus, if you're a flower farmer, many of your lessons, you can use the things you grow so that you save money because it's your own materials. And if you're a wise flower farmer, you'll take pictures of all those things that you make and put it in your Instagram and your Facebook and your um, website and start building a portfolio of fabulous things that you can do for your clients, be it wedding flowers or bouquets or arrangements or even a you pick flower garden. How cool would that be? Oh my gosh. It's just so much fun. I'm always amazed at the number of people who come to us that are flower farmers. And I learn from them because I'm not a flower farmer. I, I don't know a lot about that. I'm a flower cutter. I like to cut them up and design with them and to create beautiful things. But I, I don't I don't know how to grow them, heavens. That's a whole nother skill. And so students that come to us as flower farmers, I learn from you, which is pretty great. Now some of the other teachers do more growing and gardening and farming and such, so they have more 
input on that than I do. And that's the beauty of coming to flower school is you get several different viewpoints. We've got several teachers so that you can learn from more than just me. I know I'm the best. I know everything. My way is right. But you know what? There are other styles of creativity and other looks and other ways of doing things. And so I think it's very important that you get exposed to multiple teachers. And so in the classroom, you do have multiple teachers so that you get to see Teacher Carolyn in action, Teacher Michelle in action, Teacher Leanne, Teacher Jerry, Teacher Anna. You know, so many people here sharing their skills with you so that you learn from the best and get hands-on attention as you learn. How cool is that? So I had those cool tulips, Veronica, Hyacinth, the Antique Narcissus, Tweedia, and Hyacinth and Seeded Eucalyptus. I might have said Hyacinth twice. And then I had stuck in underneath just to get a little bit of depth of color, some purple status, because I just wanted something down low to help support everything um, so that it wasn't all by itself out there. And it just kind of fits together nicely. I need to put some sort of collar on it just to protect those stems. And what do I want to do here? You know, the green trick dianthus is kind of an interesting bloom. It's in the car carnation family. So if you say, oh, I hate carnations, I'm like, ah, oh, poo on you. Because carnations have so many different characteristics. They aren't the ugly flower that you used to think of as a carnation. Now they're on trend and they're beautiful and they have so many great colors and they last and last and last. Some of them are very fragrant. These always make me think of being a ball of moss on a stick. And I could put those kind of coming around the base just to give some protection to all those little fragile stems but I'm not having them come out long because I want it to be just sort of a hidden surprise underneath. And I just turn it and tuck it in. Will I finish this part? Any more questions out there? No, everybody's giving you all kinds of love for your hand-tied bouquet. Well, when you come to flower school, you will master the hand-tie. It can be a little tricky um, those of you that have been to flower school can vouch. The first two or three times you do it, you're like, oh my gosh, my hands, they hurt. It's not working. What am I doing wrong? And then all of a sudden, it just works. And all of a sudden, it's beautiful. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that it could be so hard. And then it was so easy. So you will learn the hand tie. We do the hand tie a couple of different ways and a couple of different days because I want you to experiment with it and try it with different flowers, different techniques, so that you figure out which one makes you the happiest and works the best with your personal style. And plus, each of us as teachers do hand ties a little differently. And so if you see each of us doing it, then you'll pick up different techniques, different ways of doing it. And it, it just works better that way. I'm tucking in a little more of the Veronica because I decided I wanted some more pink up here. And plus I had them. And you know, if you have them, you may as well use them. What the heck? But finding holes is always the challenge. There we go. And then thinking about where everything is, adjusting, making sure my form is good, that my collar works. And then I'm going to use just a little bit of bind wire to lash it off. And when you're here in class, all these supplies, all these items, they're ready for you. So you don't have to go hunting for it. Most of it's at your own station. Um, you each have your very own table, your own everything, including your very own broom. Yes, you have to clean up after yourself. 
Your mother doesn't work here, so we run it pretty much like a flower shop. You prep your own flowers, you clean everything up on your own table, you wire all your own things, you tape all your own things, you, you know, basically you're in charge of you because that's the way it's going to be when you're out there in the real world. And I want to make sure that you have that skill. So one more time, Ricky, why don't we put it up there? Don't forget, March 6th, one class, one time, will not be repeated, $500 off, because we want to get as many of you through and done as possible. Now, as many of you, up to a maximum of nine. That's it. We won't take more than nine in a class because I like to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with you where we can come around and talk directly to you, work with you on your arrangement, and really be in tune with your needs and your questions. So we are limiting it to one time, one class, March 6th, nine people. There's already some people in the class, so they already saved their money. And I believe, I don't know, four or five places left? I don't know, I'll have to look it up. If the button's turned on, there's space. If the button is turned off, it's full. That's the clue, and that happens with all of our classes. If March 6th doesn't work for you, don't forget we've got Fundamentals, Wedding Boot Camp, Advanced Wedding Trends and Techniques, Advanced Sympathy, uh, so many things coming up, Advanced Foil Design, and then we take the summer break. There will be no classes in person in the summer. We'll do online only. And then we'll be back in the fall. So if you're thinking about doing it, now's your chance. This is it. And then we're done because we use summertime for continuing education for our own staff so that we all get rejuvenated so that we can come back and share again with you. So thanks for joining me. Come to flower school. That would make my heart sing. Say a little prayer that my computer is better tomorrow, that it gets fixed. Oh, poor Leanne, oh. But the good news is that means I can't work. I don't have a computer, so instead I get to come play flower school tomorrow. Fundamentals of Floral Design, 8.30 a.m. I will be here. And if you're one of my students tomorrow, I look forward to seeing you in person as we play with amazing blooms in the Creative Center. Thanks for joining me today, next week, Teacher Michelle talking prom, and then who knows what is after that. I don't remember. I don't think that far ahead. So see you next week. Have a great evening and get out there and do something you love.